I love when coaches, consultants, and professional service providers want to do big things in their business. They want to rise to the top and influence their market and the world around them. They want to have a greater impact and make a more lucrative income. Well, if this is you, welcome to Expert in You podcast, the show where I interview other experts and coaches, consultants, so that they can share their success strategies with you. We're going to talk about marketing and how to close more sales, how to get more premium clients, and how to really build your visibility in the market and scale your business like a boss. If this is you, welcome to the show. I want to ask you to subscribe and hit the notification bell right now so you don't miss one episode. Grab your coffee and buckle up because we are ready to give it all to you to help you become the expert and get paid as the expert that you are. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Expert in You podcast. I'm your host, Dan Carden, and I'm so excited for my guest this week. I have to tell you, Mike Capuzzi, welcome to my show, and then I'll tell them the funny story I was going to tell them. Uh So welcome. Hey, Anne. It's (laughs) nice to see you again. Yes, I was actually a guest on on Mike's show. But Mike, uh, first of all, let me just tell you what he does. He is a business coach. He is a publisher. And we're going to really talk about something that he is doing that's so unique. I can't wait to dive into this with him. And also, he's a podcast host of The Author Factor. And I was a guest on his show. And But it's interesting, years and years ago, I told Mike, When I first came into the online world and was learning about landing pages and funnels and, oh my gosh, this probably had to be 15 or 16 years ago, I bought one of Mike's information products that he had out there called Copy Doodles. And now we have a lot of that stuff available to us. But back then it was all the arrows and it was fun text. And he's a Dan Kennedy, longtime Dan Kennedy client and uh, has been in that world for many, many years. So he's a brilliant marketer. But yes, I bought his copy doodles. And so when I saw his name come up and invited me to his podcast, I laughed about that because was that about right, Mike, about 16 years ago? So we launched it publicly 2007. So yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay, there we go. Yes. And it was the coolest. It was a very it's still cool. there, and we still we still have a bunch of members. It's now you a said membership you still program. Sell it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we don't put any really any energy behind it, which is probably stupid because it is a very unique database library of it's pretty graphics. cool. Yeah. I don't have it anymore. It was on an old computer that crashed and I don't even have access to that anymore, but um, yeah, but super fun. So it, so I feel like Mike, I feel like I've known you forever, really, but, um, but not really. So, (laughs) all right, we're going to dive in because today we are going to talk about his very unique way that he is helping people get their brand out there, be seen um, with a book, but he has a very unique process called Shooks. And so I'm going to just let you take it away, Mike. First of all, let's just talk a little bit about how you got here. How how did you get into doing the whole publishing thing and coming up with your Shook idea? So, Anne, it, it, honestly, it goes back to my, my mom's mom, my grandmother, my maternal grandmother. When I was very young, she lived in a different part of, I live in Pennsylvania. She lived in a different part of Pennsylvania. So we would have to travel and like go stay with her. And she had this big library in her house. And she just taught me this love of books. Um, I I got the best memories when I think about that. I would go up there and like, she'd have new books on the bookshelf and these are fictional books. And I just, I mean, I can remember being very, very young, like in elementary school and bringing books to like read, you know, we had like quiet time for reading and I'd have like real adult level books (laughs) I was reading. Um, Anywho, uh, it was just a, 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 I've always had a passion for reading. I still read. As a matter of fact, when we're done our interview, I, I just bought a new book over the weekend. I'm going to go. Oh, and you can't wait to dig bit. into it. <laughs> um, unfortunately, it. it's like a health oriented book. So it's not as fun, but um, just had that love. And when I really started studying marketing some 20 years ago, you know, and you and I both know most people of influence, most people who have something to share with the world, most influential people are book authors. Yes. And it's, it's very synonymous. <laughs> yes. Yeah, or should be or yeah. yeah. Yes. So it, I, it became as I was helping people with marketing, it just became a natural thing to add to our repertoire. 
And we kind of did it kind of in the background for a number of years. And then in 2018, 2019, I jumped all in. All we do these days is publish books, short, helpful books. We call them Shooks. Yes. Yeah. I love that. So how did you come up the short, helpful book Shooks? How did you kind of come up with that? Or did, was that through a brainstorming with somebody? Or I always think it's fascinating how people come up with names for things. Yeah. So, and I, you know, I've had, I'd say 95% of people say, think it's really cool. You know, the name, and I've got another 5% typically on like Amazon reviews are like, Oh, this is stupid. Why would you come up with your own word? But, um, uh, because I want to, and I want to, yeah, right. And that's how you differentiate yourself. (laughs) So you mentioned I'm I'm a student of Dan Kennedy and you know, if you're a student of Dan Kennedy or any kind of marketing uh, expert, you know, the importance of differentiating yourself, you know, the importance of the fact that just about every one of us has some sort of competition, whether you're a book publisher, consulting coach, pizza shop owner, So in order to attract people, you have to differentiate yourself and state who you're for, what you do. And, um, you know, I I just believe, while I love books and I believe there is a lot of opportunity for a two or 300 page traditional nonfiction book, a lot of people these days are finding it harder and harder to read. And a lot of folks are very intimidated by writing that much of content. So this concept of a short, helpful book, which is about a one hour read, um, 12 to 15,000 words, whereas a traditional business book is maybe 75 to 100,000 words. And, you know, it's very appealing. It's appealing to the person writing it. It's appealing to the person reading it. So it was really just a way of differentiating myself. And then to answer your specific question, Anne, I was reading Purple Cow by Seth Godin. I love you know, that book. Right? Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's a, a shook is a purple cow. Yes. And I'm reading it. And of course, Purple Cow is a short book. And I'm reading this. And I'm like, wait, I've got to come up with something that's different. So I'm an engineer by degree from years ago. Wow. I have now an acronym. <laughs> Let's, yeah, right. That's exactly it. Um, so short, helpful book is a shook. I love it. Now, I want to dive into this, too, because the thing that a lot of people don't know is that and I don't know who came up with these statistics or, you know, I, we should have Googled this, I guess. But um, the average person supposedly reads only about 15 pages for a book. Would you agree with that? Or do you think that's accurate or? Well, I mean, yeah, first of all, maybe depends on the person. I don't, I, it depends. I think if you're, if you're buying like, for example, business books, you're, you're buying it for a specific reason. So you're probably, you know, waiting in a little bit more than that. But I, I would, I would say maybe the better the statistic is most people don't complete a book cover to cover. Yeah. That's, that's very um, accurate. I think as yeah. well. Um, yeah, it's speaking about business books and things like that. So that's also one of the strategies with the book is that it's really helping people. It, it's really leading people to someone's service or right. expertise or business. And that's the whole purpose of the short form book or the short helpful book. Let me make sure I say that right. Is that correct? That is correct. Anne. And it's important. It's a differentiation point. So I'm a direct response marketing guy. I've been doing this since 1998. And, the, you know, the, the point with direct response marketing is to always elicit a response, right? So the, it's great to publish a book and get it out there. But if it's not doing, you know, if it's not attracting a certain type of reader, if, if it's not helping that specific reader, and then giving that, that reader who's potentially your ideal client, customer, patient, whatever it is, uh, a pathway to you, a pathway to extend that relationship beyond the book, then yes. you're not doing your you're not doing your self service, and you're surely not servicing your readers. So these are books that are meant to elicit a response and and create. It's a conversation starter, mm-hmm. and then pointing people to where to go afterwards. Yeah, so good. It really is kind of a, re, a direct response book if you think about it. Yeah, it uh, because throughout the book you put links and you put things that again will just keep pulling people. It's really almost like nurturing that person to get to the point where now they really want to work with you. But the other thing that it does is it also establishes that credibility and that expertise and that authority that you know what you're doing and that you're good at what you do. But I have a question for you. I would love to know your response to this. And that is, you know, we evolve in our business. So my book, my last book, Expert New, which is the one you really kind of interviewed me on, I published that. It took me probably 
months and months to get it written, first of all. And then I published it right before the pandemic. So that was, I guess, two th- it was the end of 2019 or the beginning of 2020, something like that. And my business has really evolved. My strategies have evolved. Everything that I've done has evolved. And so now I'm ready. You know, I want to write another one, right? Because, and, and I think that's the reason I'm asking about that is because I think a lot of people rest on one book yeah. instead of thinking, oh my gosh, I have a kind of a almost outgrown this book. Like a good example is the language in the book is high ticket, but I don't even say that anymore. I talk about ultra high ticket because again, I had to evolve past what mainstream was doing. So I feel like that book, even though it's still a great blueprint for people, the language for me is a bit outdated because my business has grown. So I would love to know your thoughts around that and what you think. Well, so first of all, there are countless, and I've had them on my podcast, countless examples of authors and who've published a book 10, 15 years ago and are still profiting from it. So, you know, when when it's a quality book and if it's on a topic that is, you know, timeless, if you will, it can have, you know, it's, it, it just can have legs that last years and years and years. But I agree with you. You and I are very similar in that respect. So I just published my 19th book. Oh my gosh, that's not like I'm publishing. (laughs) Yeah, well, you know, once you get it down and you know a formula to use, and you know you're not writing this encyclopedia, they can you can crank them out pretty quickly. But yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things. I think you and I even had a conversation about this in the in the past, where it's like I wish at some point in time I had the foresight to say, well, things are going to change, so I'll write it a little differently. It doesn't work that way. So (laughs) I would definitely encourage you. I mean, most successful nonfiction book, uh, business oriented book authors have multiple books. Mm -hmm. And if you have a crowd that, you know, enjoyed your first book, obviously they're going to want more from you. So um, I think, you know, getting on a one, one every other year, once a year type of schedule and, uh, you know, you know, evolving it or coming up with some new ideas is, is very powerful. Yeah, I think that's that's a great idea to get it on maybe an annual schedule or every other year schedule, um, because I'm on my third. And every year, every time I wrote that that book, it was to serve the audience. It was yeah. for a particular audience that I was serving and a certain market that I was serving at that time. And I felt that it was valuable. And all of my books are timeless in the fact that they're all blueprints. They're all foundational things for business growth and for business success. So there's nothing that changes except that I know the language changes a bit. And then the other thing with this last book, to me, it felt like it was really geared more towards startups Mm -hmm. uh, in the coaching and consulting space. So it's a great blueprint there, but you know, my business has evolved. Now I help people really scale to crazy levels. And so I need a book that is very specific for the scaling phase and and, and so that's really what we're talking about here in case you're confused about really how you, you know, we talk about evolving. Well, you, and you're bringing up a great point, Anne, and this is something I, I share with my clients. I share it in my shooks that I believe the key to a, a successful, again, business oriented nonfiction book is focus. It's mm-hmm. being specific so that when someone sees it, whether it's online, at a bookstore, on Amazon, wherever, um, they say that book is for me. Like that, you know, Anne wrote that ultra high ticket. That's what I want to be about. That's what I do. Like that's so, yes, having that specificity is very important. And, uh, you know, again, I always say, Anne, instead of the traditional 300 page business book, it, you'd be better served by publishing three 100 page books. Yes, you can break it up and give people what they want in a shorter book. And now you have three books versus one. So, um, but no, I agree hundred percent with you on that. So great. I I hope we're opening people's minds today as to how to really expand their thinking. So many people think about, oh, I'm an author. I have a book. Um, And so they, they're really only thinking about that book and that's, Mm -hmm. They, again, like you said, it can have legs for a lot of years, but that doesn't mean you stop there. And I think too many people think that way and they think, oh, okay, I'm an author. I wrote this book. Um, But when you're using it for business and you're using it to drive people to your business, industries change, markets change, things change, right? And so if you don't keep up with what is relevant in the industry, that book to a degree becomes a bit outdated 
um, especially in today's world. I just yeah. think, um, yeah, yeah. I, I want to know your thoughts. Attention spans, everything's shorter. You know, yes. everything's shorter. And I'm not saying you have to, you know, bend to that, but you need to accommodate. You need to sort of, uh, you know, adjust accordingly. And I, I, I would not, you know, the consternation of I wrote something and I'm afraid to either change it or update it. I think, you know, I definitely think that's that's someone's own head trash. I mean, people people have short term memories. They'll never, you know, they won't recall. Right, right. So I want to ask you something about. We'll dive into your process in a minute here, but I want to ask you. A lot of people think, oh, I would love to be have a New York Times bestseller. Mm-hmm. Talk about that a little bit and then how you feel like what we're what you're doing and, and even what I really do kind of is stacks up to something like that. And what's the what would be the benefit all of yeah. that? So listen, I'd like to be a New York Times bestseller. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but then you need to, to to do something like that. And and I'm sure you know this. It is a huge undertaking. Yeah. Matter of fact, I just had a gentleman, matter of, his uh, episode just went live last week on my podcast where he's trying to be either New York Times or USA Today or Wall Street Journal. Mm-hmm. He's been working on his book launch for almost a year, getting joint venture partners, all this huge engine because of the way the metrics are for these various bestseller lists. Um, it's, it's a huge, you know, it's a huge thing. Now, I, I don't know this, Firsthand, I've read accounts that there's a lot of ways to sort of sw- game the system, but or or buy into the system for those like levels. Like two hundred and fifty thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah, crazy stuff. I've heard. <laughs> I haven't percentage. heard that much, but I've heard six figures. Um, You've heard more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, listen. Yeah, there's clout to it. I know several New York Times bestsellers. You know, yeah, it's it's neat. It, just realize, go go in eyes wide open. You need a, a big list because they're going to rely on your list. You're going to have to right. have a, a Strong joint venture, strategic partner network. You're going to do it. And I heard of- that they won't even touch you if you don't have a big list. Is that yeah, true? I've, yeah, I've heard that too. And, and I've heard different things, you know, minimum of 10,000 or 100,000. You know, book publishers now, they want the easy button also. So their easy button is relying on your list and your, what you're going to do. Now, Amazon bestseller is a lot different. It's a lot more doable. I've two of my books have achieved number one, number one bestseller um, in multiple categories. Too. And I mean, honestly, I've always sort of poo-pooed it because again, even Amazon. Now they just changed it very recently within the last few weeks, making it harder. But um, you know, once you get a bestseller tag, it's nice. You know, you can mm-hmm. introduce some yourself as a best-selling Amazon sure. best-selling author. So I still think it's for most people, and I think it's a shiny object that's really not going to help people necessarily, or even put money in the bank. It's more of an ego thing for the that's, you know, most of the part. That's how I look at it too. Yeah, it it doesn't mean it won't have some impact. Right. right. Is it going to have the impact of? what you're putting into it. But I also heard that, um, you know, you have to like be on a guest on like 400 podcasts in a year. Like it, it's just the time commitment and the financial commitment is huge, just crazy. So I have to look at that and go, okay, how much money are you leaving on the table while you're playing that game? Right. And so I always look at things logistically like, Oh yeah, I don't think that makes a lot of sense. Um, for my business and, you know, or even for my clients. Yeah, And the only way around that I've either, you know, if you have your own big list, then it's, it's going to be doable. I mean, you know, if you have a list of hundred thousand rabbit, you know, fans, then, it, you know, it's probably doable. The only other way around it and, and not so much business oriented, but I'm sure there are examples, but uh, I, I, I interviewed a gentleman who was a secret service officer during the Clinton era. And he wrote a tell all book about that, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. And he didn't even know what he was doing. And he was a New York Times number one bestseller, sold right. half a million copies. So it was that timely sort of, you know, tell-all story. Uh, I haven't figured that out for the kind of the stuff. The gossip everybody wants, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 I think you're right. I think there is always a way to get to, to New York Times bestseller. But again, we're not talking about that driving somebody's business or right. the things that you and I help people do. Yeah. So. This is awesome. So very quickly, and I didn't mean to go down a rabbit hole. I just thought it was fun. No, no, it's a great, it's a great point. 
fun to kind of bring those things up because people have these ideas, right, of what they should be doing and what they need to be doing. And really what we're saying is it's simpler than that. And you can certainly get business from your book if your book is leading people in the right way. So give us just a, a little bit of a framework or sort of your process. So I'm going to just, if I could, so if I forget, bring me back. But I just want to mention one other thing, which I share all the time on my podcast, which it's going to maybe make some of us, some people cringe. But I always say, and really and truthfully, in my opinion, writing the book is the easy part. Mm-hmm. Because once that book is done, nothing's going to happen until you start promoting it, sharing it, marketing with it, right? That is the much harder part because as right. human nature is, you, know, you put all this energy into writing it and then you kind of like, okay, it's mm-hmm. here, right? And you're exhausted. And then that's where the real hard work starts. So sure. I, I want to just caveat and say, while creating a book is, is critically important and the formula I'm about to give is, is a good one, mm-hmm. the real magic happens after it's done. So specific to our formula, it's a direct response formula. So we actually have a very uh, I call it a recipe and I grew up. So my other grand, my other grandmother, my dad's mom was Italian. So, and they were close. So I, was, I would see them much more often. And she had all these recipe cards with an amazing cook. So I, I we came up with a shook recipe. I love, I the love cook. it. And, um, you know, it follows, you know, there's certain ingredients and there's a certain um, step-by-step uh, recipe for a shook. And it's, it's based on my 20 years of direct response. It's based on me publishing, you know, now 19 books and now 230, 240 client books. So we have a very unique formula. I lay it out in the magic of short books, the hundred page book, which people can get. Um, but it really just, it brings the reader in First of all, right on the front end, it says, listen, this book is for you if, so if mm-hmm. it's not you, don't read it. Don't waste your time. Don't leave me a bad review because it's, you know, but not Hold the book, that book up, Mike. Do you have that book there? So this is the magic of short books. And they can get that where on Amazon. Yeah, but we're going to give it your listeners. We're going to let your listeners read it for free. Hey, hey, hey. I already actually have it. Mike already sent it to me. So, yeah. so we, matter of fact, and we just update, this is like the fourth or fifth edition. I love um, it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm always freshening it up. But I lay out a very specific formula and these are real books. You know, they, they look nice and, you know, they like on a bunch and you can sign them and all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a very specific recipe. And then when they work with us and all of our clients work directly with me, you and I have a mutual client, you know, he worked directly with me. Um, it, it's, it's something I want to do. I'm not looking to scale this in some big thing where I got to have team members. I, this is something I like, I, I pay I'm just very uh, in tune with my clients, trying to help them. And um, it's about a, on, t- on average, eight to 12 week process. Okay. At times it can be, you know, go a little longer depending on people's mm-hmm. schedule, but it's, it's very step-by-step and then you're only writing in maybe 12 to 15,000 words or coming up with 12 to 15,000 words, which as I told this to somebody the other day, he's like, oh, that's just a couple of blog posts for me. So right. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not this yeah. huge undertaking. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And that's the thing that I love about it, too. Um, And I have to tell you that and I I know you and I talked about this, but when I wrote my last book, I actually hired someone who I thought would pull a lot of my content and put it into a book format. And that sounds really easy, but I just want to say it actually turned out to be a much harder process for me than when I wrote my other books, because I was consistently now having to go back to make sure that flowed and make sure things were where they needed to be. And so, yes, I had all the content created, but it wasn't organized. And then I still had to tweak it. And then I couldn't remember by the time that we got through the process it took so long I couldn't remember what we had put in and what we hadn't and I was consistently (laughs) rereading that book and I have to tell you that will burn you out on your book faster than anything so to me it was not a good process to do it that way I would not recommend that again unless somebody's actually writing it for you and then they're with all of your content and then they're giving you the copy for you to just look at and edit so a couple ideas there (laughs) You know, even that's challenging, ghostwriting. I mean, having a ghostwriter, I I always encourage our clients. Now, we just signed up one last week who he wants a ghostwriter. He's very busy. But I, I always encourage our clients, 
you, no one's going to be more passionate or knowledgeable about yeah. the topic than you are. And coming from your own words, yes, you can be coached. You can, you know, there's, you know, there's, a, I'm not saying you have to be a Hemingway or, a, you know, Shakespeare by any stretch, but I think it's very powerful when someone puts their own thoughts to paper. Mm-hmm. And then the other big benefit, Anne, and maybe you, you experience this, is when you're focused on creating a book, it really helps in ways that you, beyond the book. Like it helps you come up with ideas. It helps you come up mm-hmm. with branding ideas, names for things. True. Um, you know, formulas, your unique value proposition, all that good stuff. There's, there's a lot of hidden benefits to yeah. you know, focusing and, and creating that book. It really solidifies what you're doing. And I also find that it builds confidence in people too, because now they feel like, you know, it's one thing to create programs. Like, so I help people create their programs and their offers and things like that. It's one thing to do that. And it's another thing to really understand how to sell that to people and to really know the details of being able to present that and articulate the value of that. And so writing a book can help you, can help you really do that. It really kind of like um, organizes your thoughts is maybe it does. a better, it really better does. way to say yes. it. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh my gosh, I know I could talk to you all day, Mike, but I know that we are on a time schedule here. So uh, first of all, how can people get the free, the magic, what is it? The magic of a shook? Is that right? Uh, actually, the magic of short book. Actually, magic of short books. Okay. It's going to be three shooks. So now they're digital. They're going to be digital. They're the entire okay. book. So the yes. magic of working together, the magic of short books, and then a little gift book called, I, I call it the magic of gratitude. Ooh, um, I so this, I call this my magic kit. And if you go to Mike slash magic, and just let me know, you, you heard me on Anne's podcast, we will send you a link and you can read all three of them for awesome. free in their entirety. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. Thank you so much. This was so much fun. So thanks for sharing all of your wisdom. It was great catching up with you again as well. And I look forward to, we'll put the links, by the way, everyone, we will put the links with the show notes and and also reach out to Mike. He's, I know he's on social media, but he's not super, super active on social media. I will just say that we found yeah. that out the hard way, <laughs> <laughs> but you can reach out to him and he's just, he's so brilliant at what he does. And when I saw his name come up, I just knew, I knew I had to reach out to him. Mike, I bought your cop. I couldn't even remember the name of it though. That's how long ago it was, but so funny, but thank you, Mike. This has been so great. It's been a pleasure having you on. Thank you. And I appreciate it. You're welcome. All right, everyone. Until next time, go check out Mike. Go, uh, if you need to get a book done and you want to, you want to really dive into his shooks and the way he's doing things and he's helping people really get those books done quickly, then definitely uh, go download his books. You can check him out and have a conversation with him. It will be well worth your time. And I, he's so brilliant. Anyway, you will learn things from him just having a conversation with him. So uh, thank you again. And ha- until next week, everyone, go rock your business. God bless you. Bye-bye. If you've enjoyed this episode, I want to invite you to go check out a free training that I have at expertinu.us. It is a training that I have on how you can get ultra premium dream clients, scale your business, get more freedom, and really simplify your business and multiply your money. So go check that out. And again, that is expertinu.us. I want to thank you for being here with me this week. I hope you found massive value. Please always leave a comment, feedback, or a question. We check them all. And I want you to go rock your business and make sure you join us again next week. God bless you. Have an amazing day. Bye-bye.